Hello everyone, welcome back. The last lecture on metamodel based reliability analysis is adaptive response surface method. Now, in this lecture, we are going to apply orthogonal polynomials, but we will take the advantage of moving least square approach that we have discussed in the previous lecture and then we will combine moving least square with uh, orthogonal polynomials and that is how we will construct adaptive response surface method or we will um, sometimes call it sequential response surface method. The reason is uh, we, uh, we will replicate a limit state function where different regions will map with different strategy and that is how as we progress from one region to another region, we will try to completely map the response surface um, and that is why it is called adaptive or sequential response surface. But before we do that, let us quickly review the polynomial chaos expansions that we have already done because we will use the same strategy but we will combine with moving least square. Now, orthogonal polynomials you can see the list of orthogonal polynomials on your screen. Now, this list is not exhaustive, but again it gives a clear idea how these orthogonal polynomials are constructed using Gram's mid orthogonalization process. And there actually we need to define the domain over which these polynomials are uh, valid and then a seed through which we actually start our um, construction procedure using orthogonality and then we need a weight function. And among different possibilities, we have already discussed how to construct harmite polynomials and use them for stochastic response surface method. In principle, what we do, uh, we actually use harmite polynomials uh, of different order. You can see different harmite polynomials uh, on your screen in this table. And then uh, using these harmite polynomials where this z represents the standard normal space, and then we construct a multi-dimensional harmite polynomial chaos. So, in the event space Z, uh, we then uh, define the orthonormal set of random vari Gaussian variables Zi and then uh, we construct the uh, response surface using this multi-dimensional harmite polynomial uh, chaos that you can see the, using this expression. And obviously, if we increase the number of terms as we uh, keep on increasing the uh, number of constants you can see on your screen, that also increases and that is the reason it is called chaos. And of course, we have to keep a balance between the number of constants and the uh, end result, the quality of end results. So, that is what we have already discussed using two uh, important problem. One is a retaining wall design, another is a slope stability analysis. There, step by step, we formulated the limit state function, we identified the random variables, how we replace those random variables with uh, harmite polynomials and then how we constructed uh, the response surface and once we construct the response surface, how we can use it for uh, reliability analysis using different options which may be gradient based reliability analysis or maybe simulation based reliability analysis. This all we have discussed uh, in our previous class. So, the coefficient for this uh, response surface can be obtained from this uh, set of uh, linear equations where this a vector, it contains the unknown coefficient and uh, this harmite polynomial basis vector is actually known to us. We need to evaluate this vector at uh, some support points. Then once we do that, we may adopt either collocation or regression and depending upon the number of support points we have and then uh, we find out the optimal uh, uh, values of these unknown coefficients. Now, uh, once we do that, then our surface is ready and then we use that surface to actually find out the first order reliability analysis and then actually the optimal distance in the standard normal space that we can obtain from the response surface that we construct in the previous step. So, effectively what we do, we start with a limit state function and then that we replace by this uh, uh, response surface and then once we do that, uh, we can use the property of Hermite polynomial. So, if we differentiate the Hermite polynomial with respect to z that we know in closed form and then we can 
uh, use this relation to find out the beta that is the optimal distance in the standard normal space and for that these two expressions are familiar uh, to us. So, here we use the gradient of the uh, limit state but because in this case we have implicit limit state we take the gradient of the response surface. So, using this expression we can find out beta and also we can find out the new design point based on the initial guess. So, here we use Newton Raphson based solution and straight away from the uh, definition of the limit state if we replace that with the response surface then we can find out the gradient of the uh, response surface with respect to z using this formula and then we can find out the design point and the flowchart of this uh, is also we discussed in the previous class. So, we start with the definition of the uh, limit state and then once we uh, identify the random variables then first we assume an order and then we evaluate the coefficient of PCE and then uh, we check the convergence if it is converged then fine otherwise we increase the order and try to um, compare the CDF. So, once we get the convergence then uh, our response surface is ready and on top of that we can do first order reliability analysis or any other simulation based reliability analysis and if the need be we can go for uh, curvature corrections. So, that is how the logic goes. Now, uh, this uh, Hermite polynomials uh, when we use the multidimensional representation of the limit state is like this and then we can uh, express that in a symbolic form. So, for the evaluation of these coefficients uh, we go for collocation techniques and then uh, support points uh, we construct using the roots of one order higher polynomial and uh, you can see on your screen the different uh, Fermite polynomials of different order and then we can identify their roots these are fixed points and using these roots we can actually find out the support points using this relation. So, we get the complete combinations which we will also see in a minute how we can make it uniform. But for the time being we have this collocation points and at these collocation points we actually solve this original limits surface function and then find out its value and then using that we actually obtain this unknown coefficients. Now, uh, uh, before we uh, move further and combine the um, orthogonal um, polynomials with moving least square approach. So, let us first consider a few example. Again, this example we have solved many times. So, let us see whether we can solve the same example um, using uh, orthogonal polynomials and how it goes. So, before we move forward. So, again we consider the same uh, cantilever beam with point load at the free end and then we consider the plastic moment capacity at the support. So, in this uh, limit state we have f y times z minus 1140 where f y and z they are the uh, random variables and the properties of these random variables are given. Uh, this is taken from the Haldar Mahadevan's book so that we can compare the results and in fact, in this case we know the limit state in closed form, but this is uh, used as a benchmark to compare the results and verify whether the uh, reliability index or probability of failure that we estimate using uh, orthogonal polynomials, they are also converging to the same uh, value or not. So, uh, that is the same uh, exercise we do as we did in case of uh, uh, retaining wall or a slope stability problem. So, we identify the variable. So, in this case variables are uh, there. So, f y and z they are the two random variables in this case. So, uh, you can see uh, we construct the limit surface, but while constructing this limit surface we use this green dots. These green dots are nothing but the uh, support points. Now, uh, while constructing the response surface we must be careful because as you can see in the first uh, plot we have the response surface, but the optimal design point is actually outside the uh, response surface. So, uh, while uh, I mean constructing these support points it should cover the domain uh, completely otherwise uh, it may cause some numerical error while finding out this um, design optimal design point which is actually further clear in the second case. So, in this case we have sufficiently covered the domain and based on that we can find out 
the optimal design point or MPP in terms of Z1 and Z2. Now, if we now compare the results uh, uh, with the one obtained from form, so beta we obtained earlier as 3.6012 and corresponding probability of failure is uh, 0.00016. Then uh, we solve the same problem using different orders of PC. So, as you can see, first we started with third order PC and for this uh, we have 16 function calls. Then we have fourth order PC and for that we have 25 function calls. So, using third order PC, we find the beta to be 3.5247 and corresponding probability of failure is 0 0.00021. Then as we increase the order of PC and go to fourth order, obviously we have more support points and then naturally we expect a better uh, replica of the limit state through this uh, orthogonal polynomials and that is also reflected in the estimation of beta you can see the beta estimation has improved and it is more closer to the original value of 3.6012. So, in this case when we use fourth order polynomial we get a beta of 3.5522 and the corresponding probability of failure is 0 0.00019. So, these values are uh, more closer to the original value. Uh, but the analysis clearly shows that as we increase the order of the polynomial, obviously, initially uh, it improves the result, but uh, if we uh, just keep on increasing, then we will have unnecessary terms which may also adversely affect the end result. So, that is the challenge we always have when we uh, numerically fit a surface, sometimes overfitting also occurs. So, we have to avoid overfitting and that balance actually can give us more accurate result, uh, which anyway we will further investigate as we progress in this course. Now, so let us consider a different example. This is a very interesting problem. In this case, we have Frank's function. So, Frank's function, you can see the limit state uh, on your screen. So, this is a mm, complex function, but again, it is in two dimensions. So, you have x1 and x2. And this x1 and x2, uh, they are uh, uh, normally distributed. So, you can see the surface and this surface has actually two maxima and one minima. Although for the time being, we are not uh, going for reliability based uh, design optimization or finding out the maxima or minima. For the time being, our task is to find out the optimal distance in the standard normal space where the limit surface is actually marked by this red line. So, at this red line, this surface uh, attains a value of 0 and that is our uh, limit state function and over this, we have to find out a point where we have optimal or minimal distance in the standard normal space and that is precisely done using uh, orthogonal polynomials. So, we use uh, again Hermite polynomial of different orders, you can see. So, we started with order 3, then we move to order 4 and finally 5. And as we increase the order, if you look at the surface, which shows clearly the location of the support points and the way it is constructed, obviously from third order to fifth order, the uh, nature of the su surface closely, uh, it matches with the original surface. So, that is the point to be noted as we increase this order initially, the um, solution uh, in I mean becomes more accurate and then once we fit this surface uh, we can use that surface to find out the optimal design point and that is what you can see. So, using form over this function, so we can find out beta which is 1.6893 and the corresponding probability of failure is 0 0.04558. Now, when we use uh, stochastic response surface method and in this case, we apply Monte Carlo simulation over stochastic response surface method and not the um, um, regular first order reliability analysis and from there, we actually find out the optimal location. So, using Monte Carlo simulations over stochastic response surface, we get a beta of 1.7872 and the corresponding probability of failure is 0 0.03695. Obviously, 
This result using fifth order polynomial is very close. We will also solve uh, using other method and compare the location of this optimal design point. But one thing is uh, for sure from this analysis that the location of this uh, design point changes as we increase the order of the polynomial. So, as we increase the order of the polynomial, you can see the location of this uh, uh, optimal point also changes. Obviously, uh, in the fifth order, uh, we get a better approximation of the limit surface. Now, we will revisit this problem again uh, as we progress in this course. Our next pro problem is uh, uh, 14 is clutch. So, it is a clutch assembly as you can see it has this bearings and then uh, at the center you can see this mechanical assembly. So, it rotates and then uh, it has a, a hub and then four roller bearings within a cage. Now, this clutch is designed against the overturning based on the contact angle theta. You can see the theta defined contact angle formed by the vertical axis passing through the center of the hub with a line connecting the centers of the opposite roller bearing. So, if you check this uh, opposite roller bearings and their centers are actually connected by this uh, line and the angle made by this line with the vertical is the contact angle and you can see the gx here in this case. So, we have a limiting value of this angle is what is given in radian this corresponds to 5 degree. So, in degree we have a allowable limit of 5 degree, but beyond that we consider it to be a failure. Now, in this case we have altogether 4 random variables and their statistical properties are given along with the type of distributions. So, in this case we have non-normal distributions. So, x1 is following beta distribution while x2 and x3 are following Gaussian and the x4 is following Rayleigh's distribution. Now, again in this case we repeat the same exercise as we did in case of uh, slope stability and uh, retaining wall problem. So, we started with uh, orthogonal polynomials kept on increasing the order the moment uh, our CDF matches for these variables we uh, kept that order. Then consider uh, one order uh, more to construct the collocation points and using that we constructed the uh, orthogonal polynomials to find out the coefficients. And then finally, again once we get the coefficients, we can construct the response surface. That means, we can now replace this original gx with the help of the response surface we have developed using Hermite polynomials and then on top of that, we can carry out Monte Carlo simulation. So, we solve this example using first order reliability method and the beta is 3.9 sorry 2.92 and the corresponding pf is 0.9. 00175 and the same problem when we solve using um, stochastic response surface method we get a beta of 3.0430 and the corresponding probability of failure is 0.00117. Now, we can see even in this case we have a very close match with the benchmark results that we we will again continue working on this same problems because uh, these problems have interesting feature and as we progress you will see we will compare these results with different other uh, techniques. And in fact, in this lecture our main objective is to combine uh, SRSM with MLS and that is how we will get the adaptive response surface. Uh, sometimes we also call it sequential response surface or sequential stochastic response surface. Then we will compare uh, the results of different methodology and we will see how they relatively perform with respect to each other. Now, before we move forward, I just wish to draw your attention on other models uh, of uh, um, uh, stochastic response surface. Not always we use Hermite polynomial and in this case I will refer a paper. So, uh, this paper. Uh, was written by H.P. Uh, Gavin and S.C. Yao. It was published in Structural Safety. So, this is a very nice example of how other polynomials are used uh, to construct the response surface. So, you can see uh, essentially what we do uh, an implicit response uh, performance function, we replace it with the help of algebraic polynomials. 
Now, sometimes we consider cross terms, some, sometimes we do not, depending upon the problem we have. And then once we find out these uh, constants, then on top of these response surface, we find out the optimal design point. And then obviously that is not on the actual response surface. I have already explained while we discussed response surface first. And then what we do, we uh, use linear uh, interpolation and then that is how we get the design point which is on the uh, actual limit state. So, that is the logic we follow. Now, in this paper, uh, they came up with a higher order approximations of the limit surface using this format. So, what you can see uh, is basically having uh, orthogonal polynomials, but in this case, they used Chebyshev polynomial instead of Hermite polynomial that we have already used. Now, for Chebyshev polynomial, again, it is of degree m and in lambda is used, that is the, uh, I mean, the expression of Chebyshev polynomial. So, the domain for this polynomial is minus 1 to plus 1. Now, obviously, within that domain, you can define the Chebyshev polynomial in the same way we have done for uh, Armite polynomial. So, the roots of these Chebyshev polynomials defined by this lambda uh, and we can again find out in closed form just like we did in case of Hermite polynomial. So, in this case also uh, between minus 1 to plus 1, we know the roots of this polynomial. So, if we change this m which actually defines the degree of the Chebyshev polynomial. So, that uh, we can control and then thereby we can actually find out the roots of this Chebyshev polynomial. Then once we do that using that, uh, we can also verify the orthogonality and for Chebyshev polynomial, the orthogonality relation is given here. So, then finally, we can construct the uh, response surface and here you can see uh, using this Chebyshev polynomial, uh, that is the uh, response surface we have. Obviously, in this case, the domain of the polynomial is minus 1 to plus 1 and therefore, we have to actually uh, relate this lambda with our original space defined by this xi and for that, this relation is used. So, ultimately what we have is xi equal to mu i plus h order that is, uh, uh, that controls the domain. So, uh, and then uh, multiplied by lambda that is the root and then sigma i. So, uh, if you recall, uh, the first response surface that we developed, there we uh, again used mu plus minus k times sigma or f times sigma, whichever way you call it. And that is how we constructed the point. But in this case, uh, we will have uh, a domain minus 1 to plus 1 and this is the relation through which we actually control the support points. Now, different Chebyshev polynomials are also shown here. So, as we increase the value of m, we get different uh, orthogonal polynomials and their shape also you can see on your screen and uh, the roots are where this, uh, it crosses the zero line and that is how uh, we get this roots and using that we can actually uh, find out what are the support points. Yeah. Now, once we know the order of the polynomial, we define the domain and then uh, the unknown coefficients, we can find out using this relation, it comes from the least square approximation. We have already derived this expression earlier. So, that completes the exercise. The moment we have this uh, unknown coefficients, we know the response surface in uh, closed form. And in this paper, they also discussed about the adjusted R square to cross verify whether the model perfectly fits with the original response surface. And for that, they use other parameters to cross verify. So, the coefficient covariance matrix is given here and this matrix is uh, a diagonal matrix because of the orthogonality of Chebyshev polynomial. So, ultimately what we get, the leading diagonal is of this form and uh, that gives us uh, the coefficient covariance matrix. And from all these informations, we can actually estimate R square and adjusted R square as the need be. And in fact, I will suggest all of you to go through this paper. This is a very nice example of how we can uh, use this uh, uh, type of orthogonal polynomials for reliability analysis. In fact, there are two interesting examples in this paper, which again we will solve as we progress in this uh, lecture. 
So I will suggest all of you to go through this paper and uh, thoroughly read it so, so that you get clear idea of how different uh, orthogonal polynomials can be used for reliability problem. Again, you can see an example here which is taken from the same paper. So in this case again, there are uh, two random variables in this case. So we have x1 and x2 which are following uh, normal distribution with zero mean and unit standard deviation. And this problem is solved using uh, HOSRSM. In fact, uh, this paper also gives the link to uh, go through the codes developed by them. So that clearly gives uh, how uh, an idea how to uh, use Chebyshev polynomial and develop the response surface. So I will again suggest you to uh, download those codes using the link given in this paper and you can go through them and that also you can modify for your need. Now, for this limit state function, uh, if we change this uh, this uh, h uh, factor that we have, this h order, then uh, we can find out the pf and you can see uh, the result using HOSRSM closely matches with MCS. While the second order uh, SRSM uh, actually gives uh, an erroneous result. So, higher order approximation actually gives a better results which we have already studied using other examples. A similar claim is also made here. So, if you can construct an efficient uh, response surface using higher order orthogonal polynomials, the results are quite satisfactory and that can be used for other uh, design purposes. For example, design optimizations and many other decision making problems. So, this is a clear example of how another different type of uh, orthogonal polynomials can be used in the same framework. The logic is all the same. You construct the uh, response surface where there will be unknown coefficients. Go up to the order so that you can sufficiently map the original response surface. For that, you can use as in this paper, they used as adjusted R square values. So, you can use different uh, parameters, so different indicators for that purpose to verify whether your model is uh, correct or not. And then once that is done, on that model, you can apply any other uh, reliability analysis technique and then find out the uh, reliability index and probability of failure. Now, with that background, let us move forward. Uh, so, how let us see we can combine uh, moving least square that we have already discussed in the previous uh, lecture and then uh, bring in stochastic response surface within that uh, moving least square framework and how can we improve the performance of stochastic response surface. So, effectively a stochastic response surface is constructed using Hermite polynomial. So, uh, uh, we will follow that in this course. So, we will use Hermite polynomials having unknown coefficients. They are evaluated using support points generated through different schemes. For example, collocation method, then Latin hypercube design and there are many other methods. So, we have already discussed uh, collocation methods. Uh, we can follow any uh, one of this. In fact, we will also discuss sparse grid scheme as we progress in this lecture. So, this location of these support points is fixed because it comes from the uh, some from some property of the orthogonal polynomials. For example, we use the roots of one order higher polynomial and then use those roots to uh, construct these support points. Now, the determination of these support points, uh, it actually uh, depends on the user. So, you have uh, the liberty to uh, use different schemes and make it more efficient because uh, the more support points you need to generate the response surface, more number of function calls you have to go for and that at times uh, is computationally exhaustive and that uh, uh, that is the reason uh, we always wish to go for minimum number of support points as possible. Now, the number of support points, that is the reason if we have say unknown coefficients and NB, so number of support points should be sufficient enough, NS is the number of support points, so that should be sufficient enough to give us uh, the accurate estimate of the unknown coefficients. So, these support points should be dense 
or sparse depending upon the number of random variables we have and the degree of polynomial that we use. Now, as we progress, we will see, we will discuss different uh, support point generation schemes. So, one thing is clear that we have to customize this number of support points so that we have sufficient number of support points so that we can accurately uh, replicate the original name image surface. At the same time, we should not have unnecessarily extra support points that uh, brings in higher computational cost. So, with that background, let us now uh, go to the sequential response surface method or we also call it adaptive response surface method. As we progress, we will see that in a minute. So, it starts with the stochastic response surface, but we combine that with the moving least square technique. And when we combine these two, we get basically sequential uh, response surface where we also sequentially generate uh, support points using sparse grid. So, we will now talk about uh, different support point generation schemes and we will see how this sparse grid is going to help us to reduce the number of support points. So, to start with, we have again uh, SRSM which has orthogonal polynomials and in this case we are using Hermite polynomials. So, effectively we represent the original limit state in terms of Hermite polynomial basis and then unknown coefficients. So, these unknown coefficients will be evaluated. However, the advantage is that when we use Hermite polynomials, we straight away go to the reduced space which is defined by the standard normal variables and then in that space, we can find out optimal distance. The only thing is we have to keep in mind that the order of polynomial is the most crucial part and then uh, we can use different uh, polynomials, but uh, in this analysis, we will completely focus on Hermite polynomials, but the logic you can also extend for other polynomials also. So, again this Hermite polynomials, uh, as we keep on increasing the order, we have different polynomials. Uh, we can see the expression of the Hermite polynomials of different order and respective shape in the plot. So, we find out the roots and then using that we uh, estimate the unknown coefficients. So, this stochastic response surface effectively we fit it to replicate this original surface and the difference between these two is the error. So, we square it up and then find out the total error and we try to uh, select the unknown coefficients in such a way that this error goes to 0. And that is the advantage of this orthogonal polynomial because it is convergent in L2 sense. So, when we use that, we uh, get this uh, advantage of orthogonality and lot of terms becomes B0, which is otherwise present in case of algebraic polynomials. Now, <coughs> obviously, if we increase the order of the polynomial, the error in estimation uh, reduces as we keep on increasing. But again, at the same time, we have to keep in mind that uh, the support points uh, are more as we keep on increasing the order. So, let us see how a full grid uh, support point generation scheme looks like when we go for collocation approach. So, now in this collocation approach, if you recall, we use polynomials of one order higher and for them, the roots are fixed. You can see the roots and then uh, based on that, we can calculate the number of support points. So, number of support points here is order plus 1 to the power n and that gives us the total number of support points in this collocation approach. So, ns is there and nb that is the minimum number of support points based on the number of uh, constants that we have. So, for Hermite polynomial order up to o, the number of unknown coefficients is uh, given by this expression. So, we have n plus o factorial divided by n factorial times o factorial. So, this plot is shown here. It is a comparison between the collocation points that is ns and the support points, minimum support points required for a given order. So, as we keep on changing m and o, you can see this uh, red line showing the number of collocation points available through this relation is always more than the minimum number of support points necessary. So, it clearly shows that we have sufficient points when we adapt this uh, approach for support point generation. 
now uh, if we go for uh, this uh, support points so if you have order one uh, in 2d we have all these corner points and as we increase this order these are the roots of the hermite polynomials and that's how this is constructed so in the order five you can see we have uh, support points which is densely populated that's the reason uh, if we uh, increase the order we need more support points and at times we have uh, extra support points uh, that we can reduce as we progress we will see that in a minute so the number of points increases rapidly with dimension and order and that's the main challenge we have when we adopt uh, orthogonal polynomials to replicate the original limit state now in the MLS based sequential SRSM what we do we use the same orthogonal polynomials but within the um, moving least square framework so uh, instead of having a global uh, response surface using all the support points we divide that entire region into uh, smaller segments and in each and every segment we map the polynomial which is uh, controlled through this moving least square approach and that's how we replicate the complete surface now support points are generated using sparse grid scheme so there is a hierarchy used when we actually construct this sparse grid and uh, it helps minimizing the number of function calls that is the main advantage of using this sparse grid so how it is generated uh, you can see here so if we are at a particular level then uh, we generate it through a uh, complete tensor product and then uh, using this smallier algorithm so the sparse grid points are actually uh, given here so the number of points in the unidimensional directions so you have it here and then finally the coordinates of the support points you can see is given here so the support points are actually generated here these are the coordinates of the support points and then using that uh, we solve the problem so if i show you in uh, quickly in uh, two different uh, dimensions so we have uh, l equal to 0 for that uh, we have uh, this uh, central point in two dimension so then if we uh, show it that is in 3d you can see that is the center point then if we increase l to 1 then obviously we have more support points so we get this actual points along with the central point so obviously in 3d we have these are the support points then as we move on we go for l equal to 2 obviously we have these are the support points in two dimension and if you see in 3d that is the case now when we go for complete combinations you can see the complete combination is given here obviously this many number of support points are uh, way more than what is uh, taken here now that's how the sparse grid points are generated and uh, you can see the sparse grid points here so as we increase uh, the order and dimension obviously the sparse grid points are more but obviously when we compare that with the full grid collocation points you can easily see that we have less number of points compared to the one that we have already generated so that's the reason we have less number of support points here compared to the collocation point and that's how uh, we reduce the number of function calls when we use sparse grid points otherwise uh, conceptually there is no difference uh, in both the cases we have these support points at these support points we solve the original limit state and find out the value of the limit state and using that value we do a regression analysis and find out the coefficients so that's the same thing but the moment we use sparse grid actually we have less number of support points and that's the reason uh, it is computationally more efficient so now if we uh, use the same limit state what uh, we discussed in uh, using Chebyshev polynomial given by Gavin and Yao's paper 
So this is the limit state. Obviously, the moment we use sparse grid and localize our support points in and around this limit state, you can see as we uh, go for different NS, you can see the region. So we start with a single sparse grid with L equal to 7 and then multiple sparse grids with L equal to 7 in iteration 1 as we go for second iteration we first fit using the original uh, sparse grid and then we find out the optimal distance and in that location we increase the number of points and that's how we progress in the iteration. So the advantage here in this case the moment we go for this moving uh, least square approach as we progress from the initial design to finally when we map this surface we can control the number of uh, support points because that's how we can make the computation more efficient so you can see the number of support points is reduced as we keep on changing the combinations in different iterations now obviously if we uh, go for a quick comparison so number of support points uh, we have less in C, you can see, then it is more in A and then maximum in B. So, it all indicates how we can change these combinations in different iterations and make our model more efficient computationally. So, if we just uh, compare the spread of the support points near the limit surface, you can see we have in case of A, that is in this case it is spread all over the domain, then we have C, here you have some points uh, close to the response surface, some are far away and in the third case where we have B, obviously we have more support points. Now uh, it clearly shows that there can be a trade-off between the level and the as we progress in iterations, we can control this level and the number of support points in the sparse grid. So, this figure, it shows the locations of the sparse grid. So, we start with say two dimension x1, x2 and in this case we have normal PDF. Obviously, this is a symmetric PDF. So, you can see the support points are also, uh, I mean, symmetrically placed because of the symmetry of the PDF, but as we go for uh, other type of distributions which are not symmetric, in that case our support points are also, uh, I mean, spread according to the nature of the PDF. So, that is how uh, we progress and then finally, when we combine these two, what we do? We have the orthogonal polynomials. We customize the number of support points based on order and n that is the number of random variables to get more such important points in a uh, region where we have the uh, limit surface going through and that is how we actually map the complete surface as we progress through MLS based algorithm. So, we sequentially develop uh, this response surface using MLS based algorithm. And I will show you the result in a minute as we uh, progress further. And this is an iterative scheme. So, we start with the global uh, domain and then from that we first find out the first point, first optimal point and then in and around that point we again reduce the domain and try to map the limit surface more accurately. And by doing so, we basically optimize the Euclidean norm in the standard normal space as we do in case of um, reliability analysis with a condition that the points must be on the limit surface. Now, the sequence goes like this. We define the initial design point, which again, if you recall, we always start with the mean point. We can also start with any other. Then we have the search domain where we control this uh, factor. In fact, in HOSRSM also we had the, that H order to control the domain. So, here this lambda factor actually controls the domain of search. Then we generate the support points near the design point. That design point we start with the initial guess which is uh, for the time being mean. 
So in and around that design point, we generate this sparse grid. And then once we develop that, we check uh, the new points within these domains. Then we shift this uh, uh, as we progress further with the new design point through MLS scheme. Then we evaluate this yx, that is the limit state. Then construct the PC of order 0. Then determine the coefficients using MLS technique. And then evaluate the next optimal point. Once that is done, we check for convergence. If it is not, then we find out the next point, then reduce the domain and continue the process for the next iteration. Now, once the convergence is done, so there may be multiple design points. We will actually discuss that Frank's function um, and what should be the remedy for that, that I will also discuss. Then uh, we impose some penalty. This, uh, as we progress, we'll see, and then find out the new design point. So finally, once everything is checked, then we go for the estimation of PF. Now, this PF estimation we can do using, again, gradient-based approach or uh, simulation-based approach. Because once we have the response surface ready, we can easily go for Monte Carlo simulation-based approach. Again, let us start with this uh, Frank's function. So you can see the blue line is actually the original Frank's function. So this is a snapshot uh, taken. So original 3D surface, we cut it and then basically get this blue line just to show you how we map. In the iteration one, we actually consider the complete domain and then find out the optimal point. So this is the point and that's how the response surface is constructed. So as we progress, now we introduce moving least square based algorithm. So obviously the second iteration actually gives a better mapping as we have extra points. So in and around this point, we generate more points and then try to construct a better approximation of the original limit state. So and that uh, continues, you can see uh, sometimes what happens in and around this previous optima from previous iteration. So this was the point. So we can have some support points which actually goes beyond the boundary or the domain. Then that we actually bring it back using uh, lateral shifting. As you can see, this, uh, this point marked is outside the domain. So we bring it over the boundary and that's how we create the extra point. So if we go for third iteration, obviously it matches better. And as we progress, fourth iteration gives a better uh, approximation. And in the final iterations, uh, we have a complete mapping of the surface that you can see here. So now, once uh, the complete mapping is done through a uh, moving least square approach, we have a better approximation of the limit surface using sequential SRS. So, this is what is done here. And then finally, once we have uh, this uh, response surface ready, then we can go for uh, reliability analysis either by gradient based approach or important sampling or uh, this type of simulation based approach uh, using MCS. Now, let us first uh, solve some problem. So, for numerical analysis, again, the order of the PC is actually first fixed. And then if it is a non normal PDF, then we have to again map the uh, CDF and see the order has converged or not. And then once we get the order, then we go for MLS based SRSM. And that's how it actually progresses. So as we start with the iteration one and go to the iteration two, and then that's how it actually goes on checking the match of the CDF. So what you can see on your screen is the comparison of different order of PC. And then when you use MLS based PC, and you can easily see that exact is perfectly matching with the MLS based PC, because as we map this uh, complete region, we can completely follow the CDF of this non-normal distribution. So, we will go for uh, a few example cases. We will first start with the
Frank's test surface, uh, which is a limit state having uh, multiple uh, maxima and minima that we'll discuss. Then we'll discuss Fortini's clutch. Then uh, base isolated building, and this is actually taken from uh, HOSRSM paper that I showed you earlier. And then a non-differentiable function, this function is non-differentiable and no gradient based algorithm can operate over this function. So, uh, and then finally, we'll have a portal frame. So, altogether five different examples we'll solve now and we'll see how this uh, response surface in a moving least square framework can help us to identify the optimal distance better. So, again, uh, this is the Frank surface, you can see this is a non-algebraic polynomial. So, the limit is 0.25. Obviously, this red line actually shows the limit surface where this surface meets zero value. So, that is the location of the limit surface and somewhere here uh, is the optimal point. So, we will identify that, but the most interesting feature is that there are two local maxima and one uh, global minimum for this surface. Now, do not get confused with uh, these uh, local or global minima or maxima with the limit surface. Over the limit surface, the point uh, corresponding to MPP is the optimal distance in the standard uh, normal plane where uh, the point should be on the limit surface and for the entire surface, we can have a different minimum. So, we have x1 and x2, there are two random variables, both of them are normal. So, their mean and standard deviation are shown here. Then, uh, what we do? We fit the uh, response surface sequentially, as I have already explained, and then uh, we solve the design problem. So, we can see it goes to the optimal design point, which is over the stochastic response surface and on the red line because that shows the location of the um, limit state function. So, this is done using a uh, sparse grid and in the iteration 1 again we fit the surface, find out the uh, optima based on that global fitting and we can see the surface here. Then we go to the next iteration, we generate more points and then we improve the quality of the surface. So, we retain the previous points and then improve the quality with the help of new points and we repeat the procedure third and fourth iteration and then finally, it has converged. So, we then use this surface and you can see the local maxima as well as global minima, all of them are captured. So, now this surface can be used for reliability analysis as well as uh, reliability based design optimization. So, we will discuss all those issues as we progress in the course. So, here is the result. So, we solve the Frank's function and using different approach and the uh, complete results are shown here. So, we start with MCS where we use 1 million samples and the PF in these cases 0.02459. Now, we use this MCS value as benchmark to find out the error in other estimates. So, over the Frank's function, the moment we apply first order reliability method, we have altogether 36 function calls and then uh, we get an error of 10.37 percent and corresponding PF also is shown here. So, this is a nonlinear surface. So, when we uh, go for second order reliability method and obviously, in this case, we have curvature corrections. So, then uh, we get a better result with the help of 56 function calls and obviously, in this case, the error is 2.97 percent. So, the result closely matches with the PF. Obviously, this result is better than the first order reliability method. Then we use stochastic response surface method where we change the order of the Hermite polynomial. We go up to 10th order, obviously, as we increase the order, we need more number of support points. However, in every case, you can see uh, our error in the modeling is high 
that is reflected in the estimation of PF. So, in the fourth order, we have a error of 41.89 percent and the estimated PF, it varies from the benchmark value. Now, as we increase the order, obviously, uh, the quality of the result improves, which is uh, obvious. Then, we solve the same problem using HOSRSM and in this case, we have 70 function calls where we use Chebyshev polynomials and obviously, in this case also, uh, the error is very close, uh, sorry, error is very close to 0, it is 7.65 percent and the value of PF is close to the benchmark. Then we use sequential SRSM, so we completely map the surface and then for that, we use parse grid and we use 36 function calls and the error drops to very close to 0, it is less than 1 percent even, that is 0.53 percent and the probability of failure is very close to the benchmark value. And for this purpose, we use different uh, uh, order and uh, in different iterations, so that is also shown here. Obviously, this result clearly shows the advantage of MLS based SRSM. So, the moment we combine moving least square and the orthogonality of the polynomials that we use, uh, the result is hand in hand, we can reduce the number of function calls from the previous examples, for example, Hermite polynomials of different orders or Chebyshev polynomials uh, using HOSRSM. And then uh, that gives a better estimate of PF and obviously beta and the design point. Then, so this is uh, the error estimate and uh, you can see the adjusted R square value with different lambda. This lambda is basically the domain. We start with 1 and gradually reduce, but uh, if we arbitrarily reduce the uh, domain over which we fit the surface, obviously, it will not cover the region of optima and that is the reason there should be a proper balance between the level, the order of the polynomial used and the way we adjust this lambda that is the search domain. So, you can see in this case, uh, if we compare the results, the relative error, adjusted R square value, then number of iterations and the PF, you can see this is the region where we have best estimate of PF. So, that clearly shows that uh, this iterative procedure where we combine moving least square with uh, SRSM can give us uh, accurate result. At the same time, we can reduce the number of function calls. However, uh, it needs a number of iterations to check the convergence and the region over which uh, it fits better. So, once we do this iterative uh, procedure, then we can actually efficiently use this for the design purpose. So, that is the suitable factor uh, that we find for this uh, Frank's test surface. It can vary from one problem to another. However, we can uh, do this uh, iterative procedure and then find out this optimal uh, factor and then based on that, we can go for the estimation of PF and beta. So, the next example, 14 is clutch. Again, in this case, uh, we have altogether four random variables. Out of that, two are normal and x1 and x4 are following non-normal distributions. So, in this case again, we solve using different algorithms and what you can see on your screen again, we use 10 to the power 5 samples for Monte Carlo simulation, we use that as the benchmark result to compare other results and estimate the errors. Now, in this case, form and sum, they have convergence issues simply because of the nature of the limit surface you can see. Now, as we progress, we consider SRSM with different order. So, 3, 5 and 7 is uh, tried and for that again, uh, the number of function call varies and as we again increase the order, obviously, the result also improves. Then, uh, we use HOSRSM, which is again, uh, it requires 192 function calls but still having significant error and then we use sequential SRSM where uh, MLS is combined with uh, Hermite polynomial and then you can see 
uh, for order 2 and 1, uh, if we use different uh, lambda in different uh, iterations, then we can adopt sparse grid and therefore we can reduce the number of uh, function calls significantly without compromising the result, uh, the quality of end result. So, the error is always well within 5 percent and the PF value matches with the benchmark uh, very well. So, this clearly shows how this MLS and uh, orthogonal polynomial can combine with each other and give us a, a more uh, computationally efficient result. Now, this problem is uh, building uh, on base isolators. This is again taken from uh, Gavin and Yao's paper. And in this example, the base isolator is also having a shock absorber uh, with a gap. Then it is excited by this ground motion. It also has a secondary system, uh, which may be a tune mass damper or any other secondary system at the uh, intermediate story. And then it is excited by this pulse and then the limit state in this case is uh, given here. So, in this case we do not have a single limit state, but a combination of different limit states which is actually uh, taking care of the interstory drift and then ground acceleration and then acceleration of the uh, mass 2 that means this one here. So, the difference between the acceleration level of these two is also considered within the limit state. And then finally, again uh, the displacement between F2 and M1. So, uh, we have the second story and then this M1 mass. So, the displacement between these two are also considered to construct the limit state function. Now, obviously, uh, there are multiple random variables, altogether 8 random variables are there. Uh, all of them are following log normal distributions with mean and uh, coefficient of variation. So, our task is to find out the results in, in this case again, we use 10 to the 4 function calls and then uh, the MCS result is uh, 1 point, sorry, 0 0.1939 which is the benchmark and then we compare other results with respect to this MCS. So, in this case again, form and sum it is possible we can still differentiate this function uh, that that is done and the results are here. So, for first order reliability analysis we need 90 function calls, but the error is very high and then uh, if we go for curvature corrections we need 506 function calls, but still again it does not improve the result, but actually uh, make it worse. Then we go for SRSM with second order. In this case again 6561 function calls are there and then the results are uh, fairly accurate. Uh, we have uh, error well within 1 percent. H or SRSM also uh, it gives a better result in this case in terms of the number of function calls. In both the cases remember uh, orthogonal polynomials are used in one case Hermite polynomial, other case uh, Chebyshev polynomial. So, the results are well uh, within the allowable limit of 5 percent. So, this you can see when you compare with the MCS, both of them are very close. But when we use uh, sequential SRSM, then obviously there is a drop in the number of function calls and that is how we make it computationally more efficient and also it improves the error. The reason is we map the complete response surface sequentially using moving least square approach, where orthogonal polynomials are used. Obviously, the advantage of orthogonal polynomials are also uh, taken and that helped to get the accurate result as you can see in this case. So, as we progress in different iterations, we change the uh, L value and that is how we control the number of points in the sparse grid. So, this clearly shows uh, that how the sequential SRSM uh, works better compared to other methods where we use the advantage of both MLS and orthogonal polynomial. Now, this problem is really interesting because it is a non-differentiable function as you can see. So, it has altogether 10 random variables, but because of this 
max operation in the denominator this function is non differentiable so uh, form some or similar gradient based approach we cannot use here although this is a hypothetical limit state just to show you uh, how the different uh, algorithms perform and this is also taken from a uh, paper that we will share as we progress in this course so altogether we have 10 random variables in this case their mean and standard deviation are given and all of them are normal so in this case again we use 1 million samples for mcs and this is the benchmark result so the pf is 0 0.000396 so that's the benchmark result obviously gradient based reliability analysis cannot give us any pf so we go for srsm <coughs> start with second order then third order as we increase uh, the order obviously uh, there is a uh, in, improve in quality of result in terms of error so but you can see in this case we have large number of samples necessary to get this result then uh, we vary the order in the earlier cases all 10 random variables for example in this case we use second order polynomial so for all 10 random variables we use second order polynomial in the next case all 10 random variables used third order polynomials but then we try with different order polynomials for different random variables and then that also improves the quality of uh, end result and the error is also again uh, in and around one percent however uh, this is these orders are fixed based on the individual mapping of the limit state and which also uh, varies from one random variable to another random variable depending upon the nature that uh, is governed by the parameters of those random variables then we try with hosrsm in this case again 1804 function calls are required and the error in this case is around 8.59 percent uh, it is less than 10 percent and for that different orders are also shown here and the respective pf finally we use second order hermite polynomials but sequentially using moving least square approach and as we progress in the iterations we use uh, different values of l then that's how we control the mm, domain of sparse grid and that is reflected in the end result so in this case 504 function calls are necessary but the error reduces well within 5 percent and we get a more accurate estimate of pf so this clearly shows how we can uh, judiciously use this uh, mls based algorithm when we combine it with uh, orthogonal polynomials now the final example in this case it is a multi-story portal frame and in this uh, case the limit state is defined by this expression where we have a allowable lateral deformation at the top end so because of this lateral forces there will be a lateral deformation so at this top right corner if we find out the deformation or maybe at this corner this is marked a so delta a is basically the lateral shift of this point due to this uh, forces so it comes from the finite element analysis or any other structural analysis but this again limit state is not uh, defined in closed form so it is an implicit limit state and the random variables in this case are eight so young's modulus moment of inertia and area all are marked so now that's the table complete table that shows uh, different uh, values of the random variable so you can see uh, so this for example this young's modulus e1 e2 are there then uh, altogether five different moment of inertia are there and five different cross sections are there so this table completely shows the definition of the random variables so altogether there are 21 random variables and uh, all of them are log normal except x3 x4 and x5 they are following Rayleigh distribution 
so in this case again uh, we solve uh, for different allowable lateral deformation so at the top you can see different values of uh, allowable lateral deformation and for every case uh, we use 10 to the power 5 samples to find out the pf from mcs and that value you can see at the top row we can use as a benchmark to compare other results so in this case again form and sum uh, is done using uh, numerical uh, values of the gradient just like we did in case of uh, uh, frame uh, using ansys earlier so in a similar way uh, we have done that exercise now you can see the amount of error we get from the gradient based algorithm when we have a, a implicit response surface the result shows that the error can go as high as uh, 40 to 50 percent easily and that's because of the uh, error we uh, always get from the numerical differentiations then uh, in this case uh, srsm is tried but number of function calls are very high and that's the reason we cannot adapt this uh, orthogonal polynomials for the global fit remember in this case you have uh, 21 random variables to map and that's the reason the number of uh, function calls in this case is abnormally high compared to that hosrsm performs much better but it also suffers because here again we go for a global fit so it starts with a uh, result which is in and around having 10 percent error but as we increase this allowable limit also uh, it is reflected in the error then finally we have sequential srsm where uh, actually the result of sequential srsm shows that the errors are well within uh, five percent and that clearly indicates the advantage of sequential srsm where uh, we can combine mls with uh, orthogonal polynomials effectively and that actually uh, reduces the number of function calls when we use sparse grid scheme at the same time we get a very close uh, value of pf and obviously beta when we add up this movingly square based uh, orthogonal polynomials so you can see the number of function calls also uh, within the bracket so in case of sequential srsm we need 2108 function calls to get a result which is having error well within five percent obviously these results clearly shows the advantage of um, combining uh, orthogonal polynomials particularly harmite polynomial with moving least square approach and the re result clearly shows the accuracy that we can consistently get in different problems so that's all about uh, sequential srsm or adaptive srsm and with that our discussion on uh, meta model based reliability analysis closes here these are the references that you can use for further details on these techniques in fact uh, the complete uh, meta model based module are based on actually these references which will give you clear idea of uh, how you can solve different problems using different approaches with that our discussion on adaptive response method ends here thank you very much